atmospheric CO2. As you can see, it's at 423 parts per million. You know, you can speculate uh, only if you don't have the equipment to actually uh, test for these things. You know, you see a lot of people believing exactly what goes on mainstream media and taking it for you know granted that, that what they're saying is the case. The only way people are going to find out is actually get the equipment themselves and start making measurements. As you can see, uh, throughout this uh, lockdown, I mean, things are starting to be eased off, but the atmospheric levels have been at the same with regards to CO2, despite 90% of the world's you know, combustion engines being um, parked up. I'm talking about aircraft, ships, cars, trucks, you name it, across the range, all parked up. If humans were really contributing towards uh, the climate change, I know they don't like to use the word anymore, global warming, but if they was contributing towards climate change, surely during this global lockdown, we could have seen a reduction in the amount of atmospheric CO2. Another good thing uh, about having the equipment is, you know, uh, you can look at things like oxygen uh, saturation levels in the atmosphere. As you can see, it's over 20%, nearly 21%, and, you know, rightly so, it's never going to change um, the atmosphere uh, with regards to oxygen unless something really dramatic happens. That's because it's such a large reservoir, 20%. Of oxygen is a huge amount of um, oxygen in a reservoir um, and you know to consume even a small or to say one or two percent would have to be something dramatic happened on the earth for that to be the case maybe when the magnetosphere uh, weakens a little bit more and the upper atmosphere is subject to the solar radiation stripping away uh, through sputtering uh, we might see at that point, you know, levels change. But at the moment, you know, there's nothing to worry about with atmospheric oxygen. And we can say that because in that um, box there is a state-of-the-art oxygen sensor, uh, the Luminox. Uh, it's even used in military applications and in aircraft. So, you know, there's no questioning the level of accuracy. And on top of that, we also put a plunge uh, bowl on there so that we can press it and prime the air straight onto the filter, onto the um, um, Luminox sensor, so we can saturate that sensor with uh, air as it is right now. Um, I've got two of these Claudius Silver generators left, guys. I had the uh, parts to make them up, so I print, 3D printed them, and if anyone wants them, uh, you know, they're available. Um, you know, they're, they're for making Claudius Silver, as you know, uh, I've mentioned these a few times. But um, even if you didn't want to drink the water, and I have been drinking the water, I must have drunk litres of it over the last seven weeks, but even if you didn't want to drink the water and just use it for you know, sanitation purposes, sterilising surfaces, you know, it'd be fine for that. If you want one, uh, £95 if you're in the States, or £85 if you're in the UK. And uh, you know, these are the Mark IIs, obviously, with the 3D printed uh, boxes uh, and lids. It just covers up the electronics a little bit better than what's inside. Um, but I don't think I'll be making many more of these. So, you know, probably these might be the last two. So, yeah. Um, if you do want one, put your uh, monies in the PayPal link down below. But make a note to say that it is for uh, a cloud generator. So we've just done a background radiation check while we've been uh, waiting. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's well within uh, limits, you know, 13 microsievets. It's nothing. Uh, so, you know, the radiation's good, the radiation level's good, at least at this location. And we can, again, confirm that because we've got the Geiger counter taking readings. We know that the oxygen levels are good. And the CO2 level is at 424 parts per million. So at least we know with the equipment that we've got there um, measuring these things uh, accurately, we know for sure we don't have to speculate. It's a bit like the Trimag system that we've got um, in the loft. You know, it's a very accurate, precise, bespoke piece of equipment that we're using. And, you know, we don't have to use any guesswork. It tells us exactly what's going on. And that's the same with the magnetometers that we've got going around the world. So, yeah, guys. Um, 
I'll go back to the uh, video. You know, with regards to the levels of CO2 and who's to blame and what not for, you know, all is I can say is, you know, they are bare face liars. These government scientists that come out with this drivel and these little organisations that support them are all just bare faced liars. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of it because it's going to lead to nothing no good at the end of all these lies. You know, we're being stealth taxed by them saying that CO2 is creating a problem in the atmosphere with, you know, uh, global warming or global cooling or as they like to call it now, climate change. I'm just fed up with it. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, it's important to fund a little observatory like this because we're that little shred of light in a lot of darkness. You know, we report what we see, you know, and bring it to your attention. We don't expect everyone around the world to have atmospheric oxygen sensors, TriMag systems, magnetometers globally, you know, to find out the truths. You know, we already pay our taxes. In any case, they should be giving us these truths. You know, it was the public funded taxpayers' money that got the swarm mission up and running by the ESA. And then what did they do? Classified their data. And I've heard people that work for that um, little project, uh, Swarm, say that before they get to have a look at the data, it has to get somewhere, go somewhere else first. Now, that just raises questions to me. You know, why aren't the people running the mission getting the data first? Why is it going elsewhere and then coming back to them? Is it being changed? And even if it is, it doesn't really matter because anything over level two doesn't get filtered back down to us. And there's another thing as well. That mission is due to expire. It, nothing, none of these satellites live forever. And it's almost, if not already, surpassed its expiration date. So whatever they learned, you know, they never told us about. And as a result of that, you know, we're still in the dark. At least we've got what we've got here, a TriMag system magnetosphere sensors and magnetometers in different locations around the world. Um, speaking to Richard the other day about, uh, he's been having a few problems with his magnetometer there over there on the Gold Coast, so we're gonna send him another one out and then he's gonna send that one back. I'm pretty sure because what we was looking at on the video phone that we had together, uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot wrong with it, but uh, we'll know when we get it back here and plug it in what exactly is going on. Um, you know, this is just uh, what happens when you increase uh, your equipment out in the field. You're going to get uh, little bugs and problems like this. And luckily enough, you know, we're able to fix it, get it back out there and, um, you know, get it up and running. I really, guys, want to get a magnetometer in Canada. So if you leave me your name and, a, well, just leave me a name. I'll, I'll get in touch with you in the comments section with a method that you can get in touch with me. And... We'll link up at some point and I'll get you a magnetometer out. So if you're in Canada, keep me, you know, drop me a little message in the uh, description down below or in the comments section and just say, Gene, you know, I'm interested in having one of your magnetometers off you. Um, let's take it a little bit further. Just give me a brief description of where your location is as well. And uh, we'll see what we can do without getting you one out. Uh, what else? The only other thing is, with all what's going on, you know, we've got the Grand Solar Minimum the magnetic pole reversal. We've got COVID-19. Uh, um, you know, we've got all the things that are being done as a result of COVID-19. And on top of that, we've got the BLM protests around the world. All these things are by, I think, no coincidence, guys, that things have gone globally this year for some reason. I was talking to a friend of mine in Belgium, Lees, and, uh, you know, we both concurred on the same thing you know your gut instinct uh, that you have uh, you know like I say we both thought the same thing that there is something on the horizon a lot bigger and a lot worse which is going to shock us all at some point I've got that feeling and um, you know we've just got to wait and see to see if that instinct is you know really kicking in and doing what it's supposed to. We all have this ability to, you know, sense something. You've probably had these um, sensations before where you feel something's just not right and it, it's changed the course of plan or action. Um, but yeah, we, was, we both agreed that, you know, there is something really big 
on the horizon that we don't know about yet. It could be, you know, changes uh, that lead up to the magnetic reversal. It could be, uh, you know, a worsening of the grand solar minimum. Uh, it could be a lot of things. But, you know, deep down, I get that feeling that something's not quite right with all this or what we've experienced this year. It's left like a little uncertainty in the future. And, you know, I believe it probably won't be the distant future either. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. OK, guys, it's Sunday. Um, you know, it's a bit overcast here in the UK. I still feel like I probably will go for a walk with a brolly later on. Uh, I might do a 10k walk but meantime if you want one of the uh, Collage Silver generators uh, put your money in PayPal uh, like I said 95 if you live in the US or 85 if you're in the UK um, what else is there other than that guys you know there's a link down there if you want to join us on Patreon or make a one-off PayPal donation to support what we do here at the observatory what we're trying to do is an honest job and not just literally talk about these things but if we've got questions to ask let's do it properly let's do it scientifically let's get the equipment get it on you know where it needs to be and bring back that data process it and get the truth out with regards to what's going on it's simple as that what we try and do is be proactive at the observatory and not just like a lot of other youtubers talk about the situation you know copy and paste that sort of thing Okay, have a good evening, oh, good afternoon, and I'll catch up with you again at some point. As always, bye for now.